Hello, my name is Keshwani. That is K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. And we do so by learning a few new words every day. Today is our day number 15. Let's begin. The very first word we want to learn today is Regiment Reg O Ment Regiment What does it mean? A regiment simply means to follow Strict orders or set of rules, as in the military, to follow strict orders or set of rules. A unit of uh, uh, military is referred as a regiment, it is made up of a certain number of battalion or something like that. But uh, that's the literal meaning of the word. Metaphorically, it means to follow strict orders, strict rules, it means to follow a to follow a diet plan or a plan of action. For example, for example, if we were to say to ourselves that I'm going to learn uh, two new words every day, or five new words every day, or whatever it is, ten new words every day, whatever it is that you that you decide on, and if you follow that strictly, you're following a regiment. It just simply means to follow a strict set of rules, or strict uh, guidelines, or or to follow a plan that is that has been laid out, either by yourself or somebody else. That was it. Regiment was the word. I want to move on to something different. Let's learn a couple of interesting words. The word is, the words are rather, but the first one. Moniker. You know what that means? Moniker? And here's another one. Sobriquet. 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 Moniker. Do you know what they mean? They both mean nickname. Let me first put down the pronunciation before we worry about the meaning. Mon e Moniker is also sometimes spelled as M O N I C K E R. It has the same pronunciation and it means somebody's nickname. If somebody has a nickname, that is their moniker, that is their sobriquet. Sobriquet, on the other hand, sobriquet, on the other hand, just like moniker, it has two different spellings. Just like moniker, it has two different spellings, but unlike moniker, where the two different spellings have the same pronunciation, here the two different spellings are pronounced differently. That is a sobriquet. And then we have subriquet. Su, S O U, su, and then the rest is the same. Again, it means nickname. Same thing. Where do you ask these uh, strange words come from? Uh, as I have told you before many times, this is our 15th day. Uh, they come out of nowhere, there is no rhythm or rhyme to it. These are just words that I collected, these are just words that I come across. Uh, these are just words that I encounter 
uh, in my reading here and there, anything at all that I'm, that I'm doing and if there's a word that crops up that I don't know that I would like to learn, I made a list of them. And I've been wanting to learn them properly, formally, for the longest time and I kept procrastinating. And this gives me the, there's a good word. Let me first make sure that I know how to spell it and how to pronounce it before I make a fool of myself. Because I always like to make a fool of myself after I look up in the dictionary, not before it. The word I'm looking for, as far as I know, is called impetus. There we go. Impetus. We we'll learn this. We we'll learn this word uh, later on in the future. Uh, it is a synonym of prodding. When did I cover the word prod? I covered it just a few days ago. There you go. This is on page number, day number 12. Number 12. So if you see a word with a number next to it, that means I covered it on day 12. So if you were to, if you were to type in Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day 12, you will see the word prod, which means to give somebody a nudge, to give somebody a push, to, 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 to give somebody final, final uh, in, uh, uh, incentive, I said it was not the word, but, but the final nudges I said, to get them going. Uh, as I said, I've been, I've been, these words I've been coming, coming I've been, uh, I came across in my reading and, and, and so forth and I kept collecting them because I wanted to learn them and I learned them haphazardly here and there, so, but I wanted to learn them formally, put them in a list, I looked them up properly and have a proper list and so on and so forth and I said to myself, well, why not I start making videos and having this plan, having that regimen of putting a video every day gives me the impetus, give me the, it is, gives me the priding that I need, the push that I need to follow the regimen, it gives me the discipline and that's why I'm doing it, that's all. That's why I made the videos because it gives me that extra push that I need because I already made a deal to myself, a uh, deal with myself that I'm going to put the video every day. So now I have to do it every day, I have to learn few words every day formally on a piece of paper, which is exactly what you should do. Have a notebook, have some index card, have some system where we learn something every day, whatever it is. So again, Monica has two different spelling, but they're pronounced the same way. It means nickname, sobriquet and subriquet, they also mean nickname. And that was it. Let's move on to something else. I'm going to cover this word in the, in the future. This word has only been covered on day 12. These six words that you see, tried, banal, hackneyed, prosaic, soporific and cliche, I believe I covered them I don't know why they are still there, on day number 13. So if you want to learn these words, watch the video for day 13. These are synonym, these six, these, these six words are synonym of pedestrian. Perhaps that will arouse your, arouse your curiosity as to how in the world these words could possibly be synonym of word pedestrian. Well, watch the video day 13 and learn these words and learn the word pedestrian and in the process also learn the word novel which is the antonym of pedestrian. Anyway, that was the end of it. And you're going to find all of that in day 13. Prod, it means, as I said, it's to give somebody the extra push, the extra nudge to get them going. I want to say the word catalyst, but catalyst is a different, different, different thing, different meaning. Catalyst, of course, you know what it is in the in the in the, in the chemistry, in the sense of the chemistry, is this extra ingredient that you put in to speed up the process. That's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about speeding up certain process. We're talking about to get it going in the first place, to to initiate, to to get it going, to begin in the first place, which is not the same as. Uh, that's something that is already going and you want to speed it up. That's a different story altogether, which is where you would use the word catalyst. The next word I want to learn is pre ra go tiv. I have to say it slowly. There are many words. When I want to pronounce them properly, as I said, being a non-native speaker, I have to slow down and pronounce them properly. Otherwise, as my as my eight-year-old will tell me, I will muck it up, muck it up. Not not the other one. No, not with an F. The what I said was 
something that begins with an M, muck, M-U-C-K. To, to muck somebody something up means simply means to make a pig's breakfast of it. Perhaps you don't know that expression either. Uh, also, uh, to make some uh, pig's breakfast or something is to make a huge mess of it. As you can imagine what a pig's breakfast would look like. So to make sure that I don't muck up the pronunciation, I always slow down and make sure that uh, that is done right. Especially this word. The reason I'm covering it is because for some strange reason I have this uncontrollable urge to pronounce this thing as per. It's not per, it's pre. It's prerogative. Not prerogative, prerogative. Sometimes I heard people I hear people pronounce it as prerogative. It's pre prerogative. 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 What does it mean? It simply means an exclusive an exclusive right an exclusive right or a privilege privilege let me give you an example of an exclusive right or a privilege uh, that somebody might enjoy uh, it's exclusive because it applies to a certain subgroup of people or certain uh, or one individual in the group or it's, a, it's an exclusive right it doesn't apply it's not a right that everybody enjoys in a setting, for example, in a, in a contract, you may have a customer, a client, and 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 and, and the merchant, where the nature of the contract may be such that the client may have the prerogative of refusing to accept the delivery because the delivery is not up to the, the goods are not up to his specification. So upon delivery, he might examine the goods and say, "This is this is not what I ordered. This is not up to my specification. This is not done right. I won't accept the delivery. I won't sign for them." But you, as a merchant, after having signed the contract to deliver the goods, simply cannot pick up the phone and tell the clients, "Well, I know we have a contract, but I really don't like deliver. I really don't feel like delivering the goods. It ain't going to happen. If there's a contract, you have you must deliver. It is not your prerogative to simply refuse to deliver. It is the prerogative of the clients to refuse to accept the delivery, if." if the goods are not up to his specification. Don't, don't ask me where I picked up this, uh, it ain't going to happen, do you understand? We're not going to do that as a vocab, it's just something I picked up somewhere. It's not going to happen. <coughs> so it's an exclusive right or a privilege. <coughs> excuse me. People sometimes talk about, <coughs> excuse me, uh, one, 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 <coughs> one sometimes talks about <coughs> uh, <coughs> <coughs> one, one sometimes talks about a lady's prerogative. There is no such thing as a guy's prerogative. A guy, after having gone certain path, must perform. He does not enjoy any such prerogative to change his mind. Not that I can imagine of any reason why he would want to, but anyway, that's a different story. The next word we want to learn is... Aberration. I wanted to cover this word for two reasons. First of all, I like the word, in, the word itself, but secondly, I have a tendency, I don't know why, maybe you don't, but I have a tendency of always misspelling this word. It's aberration with two R's. It has two R's. That's why I put a box around the second R to remind you, and it's pronounced ab aberration. What is an aberration? It's a noun, obviously. An aberration is a deviation from norm. Something that you would not expect normally. It is an outlier. It is something that is a one-off thing. It is an 
one exception. It is not something that you would expect all the time. If it happens once in a blue moon, it's an aberration. Uh, so you may describe somebody's behavior as an aberration. If somebody asks you, why in the world did you do that? Such a stupid, such a, such a idiotic thing or such a horrible thing. You, you, and you might say, well, it was an aberration. What you're trying to say is that it's not something you do every day. Uh, it's just happened. Do you understand? It's just a one-off thing. I don't usually, if the officer pulls you over going 90 miles an hour in a 50-mile zone and he asks you why does, why, or what was the reason, you, know, you might say, it was just an aberration officer. That is, if you want to get a ticket, because when you use the word aberration, you're going to get a ticket. So don't use that word in that context. Because you don't want to piss him off more than he already is by using a word that he's not going to understand. Do you understand? It's an exception. It's a one-off thing. It's an outlier. What is an outlier? Outlier is a term from statistics. I'm sure most of you know already. Uh, for example, for example, if you have if you have two variables here, and you may see a relationship between the two here, where if you were to run an OLS ordinarily square, it may look something like this, and then all of a sudden you have one observation, which is uh, way over here. Well, that's an outlier. As you can see, most of them fit uh, uh, ordinarily square would give you the regression here, but that's an outlier. It's an exception. It's, it's not something you'll worry about. Do you understand? It's not something that happens all the time. It's a one-off thing. It's an outlier. It's a deviation from the norm. This is a normal relationship between the two variables, as you can see here. That is an, ex that is an exception. And that exception is called an aberration. Uh, the adjective for it is where should we put it? A bur run aberrant. It's an adjective. So if you if you if your behavior was such that it was an aberration, that was an aberrant behavior. I always say to slow down, which is the behavior that is not considered normal, that is not considered usual, that is not something that is accept, expected. It is uh, something out of the ordinary, something that happens once in a blue, as I said. That was the end for today. That was that. that that's all I have for today. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. Learn few words every day, and that's that's how it's going to work. Uh, over, 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 it's not going to you're not going to see the effect uh, immediately, but over a few months, you will see an increase in your vocabulary, and you will see that you will begin to notice more and more words in your reading. Uh, if you if you if you're listening to a news, uh, whatever it is that you that you're engaged in, maybe in the lectures, you will begin to notice words that before you simply ignored them or you try to figure out the meaning from the context. Now you'll say, aha, I know exactly what it means when he talks about an aberrant behavior, an aberration. I know what, he talk about, what he's talking about. An aberration is an exception, is an outlier, is a deviation from the norm. All right? If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I, do, uh, I, I, do, I provide tutoring services over the internet via Skype. And I also, of course, do face-to-face -face tutoring in person. And I also do consulting over the telephone. If there is anything at all that I can help you in your preparation for the GRE, the GMAT or the SAT or the TOEFL, go to any of the website addresses there, prepforgre.com, prepforgmat.com, prepforsat.com, prepfortoefl.com. Go any, to any of these websites and send me an email, all right? Or you can simply go to keshwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. All right? Thanks.